Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we have a lot of stuff to cover on proving that figures are special quadrilaterals. All right, so let's start with our first figure. We're going to talk about first. We're going to talk about the figure and the definition, and then we're going to go over how we prove uh, that figure is what we say it is. So we have a rectangle. Definition of a rectangle is a parallelogram with at least one right angle. All right, the ways to prove that a quadrilateral or a parallelogram is a rectangle. Number one, if a parallelogram contains at least one right angle, then it is a rectangle. So this goes back to what we had just said is the definition of a rectangle. So there's really no proof that's required for number one. So if a parallelogram contains at least one right angle, as we see here, I have opposite sides that are parallel, then it is a rectangle by definition. All right, and number two, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. Okay, well, why is that so? So let's mark up the diagram. I have uh, opposite sides that are uh, congruent and parallel. And I know the diagonals B, D, and C, A are congruent. So I can say then that triangle B, C, D, so triangle B, C, D is going to be congruent uh, with triangle CDA by side, side, side. So the diagonal is congruent and the opposite side is congruent. Now I can say that angle BCD, angle BCD, and let's do this in blue, is going to be congruent with CDA, this angle here. And then I'm going to say that angle BCD, because I have parallel lines, if I have two interior angles on the same side of the transversal, they're going to be supplementary. So angle BCD is supplementary to angle CDE. And if BCD and angle CDA are both congruent and supplementary, then they're right angles. So now I have my uh, rectangle because I have at least one right angle that is um, one right angle in a parallelogram. Okay, moving on to number three. If all four angles of a quadrilateral are right angles, then it is a rectangle. So I have the, the three. So remember, we had the first one. We had a definition of a rectangle. It's a parallelogram with at least one right angle. Uh, we said that if a parallelogram contains at, one, at least one right angle, then it is a rectangle by definition. Second, we said if the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. And then finally, we said if all four angles of a quadrilateral are right angles, then it is a rectangle. All right, well, why is this so? Well, I know that angle C is supplementary to angle D because they're both right angles. So that means that BC is parallel to AD. So if, again, if I have two angles uh, on the same side of a transversal that are uh, supplementary, then I know that the, parallel, or the lines that are cut by the transversal are parallel. In the same fashion, I have angle A and angle D that are both supplementary to each other. So I can say AB is now parallel to CD. So if BC is parallel to BC is parallel to AD and AB is parallel to CD, then um, I have a rectangle because I have a parallelogram with at least one right angle. All right, so we're done with the rectangles. Let's talk about kites. So the definition of a kite is a quadrilateral in which two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides are congruent and ways to prove uh, a special figure is what it is. Uh, uh, number one, we say if two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the figure is a kite. So by definition, if I have two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides uh, congruent, then the figure is a kite. Okay, number two, if one of the diagonals of the quadrilateral is the perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal, then the quadrilateral is a kite. So we know from our previous discussions that if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it's equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. So I'm already given that AB and BC are congruent. I'm given AD and DC are congruent. So both D and B are equidistant from the endpoints A and C. So I know that BD is the perpendicular bisector of that segment. If BD is a perpendicular bisector of that segment, then we know in reverse that it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. 
All right. So if one of the diagonals of the quadrilateral is a perpendicular bisector of the diagonal, then the quadrilateral is a kite. I say that uh, BD is a perpendicular bisector of AC. So I know that AB and BC are congruent and AD and AC are congruent. Okay, so just in summary, if we have two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides of a quadrilateral that are congruent, then the figure is a kite. That was by definition. And if one of the diagonals of a quadrilateral is a perpendicular bisector of the other, then the quadrilateral is a kite. We know that because if uh, the diagonals of the quadrilateral are the perpendicular bisectors, then the opposite sides, or the opposite points or vertices of the kite are going to be equidistant from the endpoints of the other diagonal. Okay, so now we have a definition of a kite, two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides which are congruent. All right, moving on, the third figure. Third figure is a rhombus. Definition of a rhombus is a parallelogram that contains a pair, at least a pair of consecutive sides that are congruent. So I've marked up the diagram here. I have one pair on the far left-hand side, and then the top uh, segment is also congruent. And then a parallelogram opposite sides are parallel. So if I want to prove that a figure is a rhombus, uh, if it's a parallelogram, with two consecutive uh, sides that are congruent, then it is a rhombus by definition. So we don't need to go into a proof for that first one. Second is if either diagonal of a parallelogram bisects two angles of the parallel parallelogram, then it is a rhombus. So if either diagonal of a parallelogram bisects two angles of the parallelogram, then it is a rhombus. So we start with a parallelogram. I know in a parallelogram that opposite angles are going to be congruent. Right, so if they're congruent and I bisect those congruent angles, then I have two pairs of congruent angles, BAC and BCA and DAC and DCA. And we know that if angles are congruent, the sides opposite to them are congruent. So I know AB and BC are congruent. And that's all I need to prove that this figure is a rhombus, because if a parallelogram, by definition, has two consecutive sides that are congruent, then that figure is a rhombus. Okay, moving on. This is just the explanation, and I'll leave this up here for a second. So there are two ways to prove that this parallelogram is a rhombus. Again, the first one, by definition, if I have uh, parallelogram with two consecutive sides that are congruent, then it's a rhombus. And the second is if either diagonal of the parallelogram bisects uh, two angles of the parallelogram, then it is a rhombus. Okay, number three, if the diagonals of a quadrilateral are perpendicular bisectors of each other, then the quadrilateral is a rhombus. So we go back to our figure and we mark it up and we see that if a diagonal, um, if the diagonals of a quadrilateral are perpendicular bisectors of each other and the quadrilateral is a rhombus, that means here if I identify point E as the intersection of BD and AC, I've created four right triangles that are congruent. I have BE and ED that are congruent. I have CE and EA that are congruent. And I have the right angles BEA, BEC, DEC, and DEA that are all congruent. So by side, angle, side, I have these four triangles that are all, let's say this is four, that are all congruent. So I know that if angle or triangle 1AEB is congruent with CEB, then AB and BC are going to be congruent by definition. I also know that angle BAC and angle ACD are congruent. So I have alternate interior angles that are congruent. So that tells me that AB is parallel to CD. And then I know that DBC and BDA are congruent. So alternate interior angles proving parallel lines AD and BC. So if B, C, A, D are parallel, A, B, and C, D are parallel, and A, B is congruent to B, C, then the figure is a parallelogram with two consecutive sides that are congruent. It is a rhombus. All right, so just to review again, 
If a parallelogram contains a pair of consecutive sides that are congruent, then it is a rhombus by definition. If that either diagonal of a parallelogram bisects the two angles of the parallelogram, then it is a rhombus. And if the diagonals of a quadrilateral are perpendicular bisectors of each other, it forms four congruent right triangles. And with those four congruent right triangles, we can show that we have opposite sides that are parallel and two consecutive sides that are going to be congruent. So again, we have a parallelogram. Okay, next figure is a square. And the definition of a square is a quadrilateral that's both a rectangle and a rhombus. Uh, by definition, so if we prove that a figure is a rectangle and a rhombus, then we've proven it's a square. There are no other proofs beyond just this one explanation or definition. Okay, next, isosceles trapezoid. Definition of an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid. And by the way, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral that has exactly one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. And the definition of an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid in which the legs are congruent. So here I have A, B, leg A, B, and leg C, D. Those two legs are congruent, and sides B, C, and A, D are parallel. So one way to prove that the uh, trapezoid is isosceles trapezoid, if the non-parallel sides of the trapezoid are congruent, then the trapezoid is a, a isosceles, and that's by definition. So if we want to prove that I have an isosceles trapezoid, uh, given that there's an, a trapezoid, we just prove that the two legs are congruent. And then the second way to prove that a uh, quadrilateral is a trapezoid is if I have lower and upper base angles of the trapezoid that are congruent, then it is isosceles. So we're going to identify these upper base angles as angles 3 and 4, lower base angles as 5 and 6. And what we're going to do is we're going to extend AB out to C and ED out to C. So C is the intersection of the extension of AB and ED. And we're going to identify angle 1 here is this angle CBD and angle uh, 2 as the angle CDB. So we know based on what's given, e if either the lower or the upper base angles of a trapezoid are congruent, then it is isosceles. Well, let's just assume that the angles 3 and 4 are congruent. <clears throat> Well, we know also that angles 1 and 2 are going to be congruent as well, because if I have angles that are supplementary to congruent angles, then those angles themselves are congruent. So if <clears throat> angle 3 and 4 are congruent, then 1 and 2 are also congruent because they're supplementary to congruent angles. I can therefore say that CB is congruent to CD. Now, I also am given that angle 5 and 6 are congruent. Um, and they're also corresponding angles to angles 1 and 2. So I have two parallel lines, BD and AE. Uh, I can prove that angle 5 and 6 are congruent uh, from the previous example where 1 and 2 are congruent, or based on a given that either the lower or upper base angles are congruent. So now I have angle A and E, or 5 and 6, are congruent. I know that AC is congruent to CE, because if angles are congruent, the sides opposite them are congruent. And if I know that BC and DC are congruent, then AB and DE are going to be congruent because when you subtract congruent angles from, I'm sorry, congruent segments from congruent segments, their differences are going to be congruent. And if AB and DE are congruent, then the figure ABDE is an isosceles trapezoid. Okay. Last one for the trapezoid. If the diagonals of a trapezoid are congruent, then it is isosceles. So if the diagonals of the trapezoid are congruent, and let's just draw those out, then I have an isosceles trapezoid. So how do we prove that that's actually true? So I go to my figure, I mark it up, I have AC and BD that are congruent. So what I want to do here is I want to draw an auxiliary line A to E and it's going to be parallel to BD. So I've just created a parallelogram because I know AB and DC are parallel. Now EC and AB are also parallel. AE and BD are parallel. So I have a parallelogram ABDE. Well, AE is going to be congruent to BD just by definition of a, a parallelogram. BD is going to be congruent to AC. That's by, that was given 
because remember if the diagonals of a trapezoid are congruent then it is isosceles. So let's mark this up so we don't have too much confusion. So I have AE which is congruent to BD and then I also have AC which is congruent to both BD and AE by definition. So now I have an isosceles triangle EAC which means that angle 1 is going to be congruent to angle 3 because I know that if the sides are congruent the angles opposite them are congruent. Well <clears throat> I can also say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because angle 1 and 2 are corresponding angles. So now I have angles uh, 1, 2, and 3 that are all congruent. So angle 2 and 3 are congruent by the transitive property. DC is congruent to itself. So triangles ADC, now let's do this in blue, ADC is congruent to BCD. Uh, and that's by side angle side. So now I know that AD and BC are congruent by CPCTC. So I can say that this given uh, trapezoid is isosceles. So let's just review the three different ways to prove that a trapezoid is isosceles. One, by definition, if the non-parallel sides of the trapezoid are congruent, then the trapezoid is isosceles. If the lower upper base angles are congruent, so the lower base angles are congruent, or the upper base angles are congruent, then the figure of the trapezoid is isosceles. And then finally, if the diagonals of a trapezoid are congruent, then the trapezoid is isosceles.